in this video, we're going to talk about the biggest career mistake many cloud architects make and solutions architect makes that cost them millions of dollars over the life of their architecture career. I don't want you to make any of these mistakes. I want you to have the best architecture career. Whether your goal is to become a principal architect, a distinguished architect, a chief information officer, I want you to know how to get there. And uh, part of that is uh, how you take your architecture career, how you manage it, what you learn and what you don't learn and the skills you develop for the future you want versus the skills you had in your past. That's going to be the topic of today's video. And if I tell you that the biggest mistake people actually make in their architecture careers is staying techy and becoming too techy, in this video, we're going to talk about why, where you still have to be a strategist and an expert on the tech, but why staying too techy will cost you $100,000 or $200,000 or more per year. Don't make this mistake and you'll be on your way to principal architect, distinguished architect, CIO, CTO. Now, the mistake we're talking about usually comes from people that had a strong tech background, the best of the best engineers, the people that love being hands-on with the technology. It usually occurs because someone was such a good leader in their field, they felt their confidence, they got their self-esteem, and all of it with how great they were in tech. Now, all of a sudden, we have that person that's a technical expert, which we value very much, and now all of a sudden, they're in a cloud architect or a solutions architect role where their job is and now to enhance their client's business performance in some way, shape, or form. Not the technology itself, but to design a system to enhance the business performance. Now, whether that business meaning is a hospital that wants to get more patients out of the hospital with a lower infection rate, whether it's a bank that's trying to process trades faster to gain a competitive advantage and earn more, in their investment banking functions and their trading functions, whether it is a organization that wants to sell more like a global retailer on their website. The goal of all cloud architectures and all solutions architectures and enterprise architectures is to optimize our client's business. So if you are an architect that can deliver a huge measurable business impact for your client, they're gonna pay you and very handsomely. If you can just do the tech, there's value in that, and that's still important. But the tech itself is a $150,000 job, and being able to optimize the business is a half a million dollar a year job. And which one do you want? Well, that's up to you. But if you're going to deliver a measurable business impact, it's going to take a lot of business knowledge. It's going to take very strong leadership skills. It's going to take the ability for you to sell a solution to the C-suite that's going to pay for it. It's going to take some really strong presentation skills and you're going to have to know how to leverage technology to improve performance. Now, that's different than how to build the technology. So this level of knowledge we're talking about is how things work, how things fit together, how they integrate together. So this is not how to code or configure, but it still takes a lot of knowledge of the technology itself. So we're not saying don't focus time in developing your architecture skills. How do I design a technology for this problem? How do I, would I design the technology for this problem? How do, what are the advances in security? What are the advances in AI that can deliver a measurable business impact to the client? That you still need to know. So you still need to sharpen your technical tool set. Here's where it goes wrong. When someone is an architect and they say, oh, I'm going to take an AWS SysOps, which is designed for more sysadmin type people and cloud admin type people than an architect that's a system designer or the solutions architect that's been a solutions architect that says, I want to learn Python. Well, coding is not part of their job. Their job is design, present, and sell for the cloud vendor they work for, for the most part, not to code. So are they developing the skills that make them better at their job, which their manager would promote them for? For example, a solutions architect that can bring in $100 million a year of architectures versus $3 million a year of architectures. There's a big difference in what one will be paid versus the other. So let's talk about what is going to get you paid. It's going to be your business acumen. It's going to be your leadership skills, your sales skills. And they're going to be much more valuable. And if you look at any major tech company like a Cisco or a Palo Alto, you'll see a director level role is about a half a million dollars a year on average, like any tech role with strong business acumen. So 
I want you to go out there and get that same level of business acumen. I don't want you to learn how to stuff like you would have done in your engineering job because you're no longer in an engineering job and the skills from your last job will get you straight back to your old job, but they won't get you promoted to any new job. You're there for a different role and you have to be better at your new role. So this is how we have to figure out where we take our time. So now I've got an enterprise architect, a cloud solutions architect, a cloud architect, and all of a sudden they go get an MBA and they enhance their leadership skills. Now the architect knows how to deliver much better business results because now they understand business, for example, and they know how to lead a group of people. Great. Now, if the architect takes an advanced certification in architectural design, like a CISSP for security or a CISM, for which is more of a what the security ar architect uh, needs to discuss with the C CISO or a CCSP or even a CCDE, great. These are architecture certifications. These are deep architectural knowledge, and they will enhance your career. But if you go down with a sysadmin thing, like a Linux certification, like a Red Hat Systems Administrator or an AWS SysOps Administrator, there is zero benefit in your career for you. Now, there would be if your goal was uh, to be a sysadmin, a huge benefit. But if your goal is to be an architect and optimize business performance, every minute you spend doing these things, guess what, is a minute you're not spending learning the skills that will make you better. Learn business acumen and it can increase your salary by $100,000 or more per year. Enhance your emotional intelligence and it'll enhance your salary. Enhance your leadership skills and it's gonna enhance your salary. Remember, an executive is paid a half a million dollars a year, but a sysadmin might earn $100,000 or less. So here you are in an architect job and you wanna move up into a half a million dollar position and then you learn the skills for a $100,000 job or less. It's not a help to you. So the key is the architect job is planning and you and I and everyone is gonna be the sum of how we spend our time or effort. What we eat, the training and career development we do, uh, the exercise we do, every decision we make either gets us closer to our goals or further away from your goals. And there's only so much time in the day, you know, you can only uh, spend the opportunity here, here, opportunity cause. So where do you spend your focus? Now, at the end of the day, remember who presents you as an architect. It's the leadership that promotes you to be an architect. And no matter how hard we want to be uh, strong peers with the engineers where we used to come from, especially if we used to come from an engineering background, they can't promote you. It is the leadership that actually promotes you. So you need to cater to what the leadership wants for you versus what's most natural to us. Some of us just love to play with the tech. So... Understand if you're to say, say a solutions architect over at AWS or a solutions architect over at Azure or a solutions architect over at Google, Cisco, IBM, chances are your manager wants you to increase the amount of architectures you can sell. And your bonus is usually somewhat determined by that. Increase the trust the client has in the company, increase the relationships that you have with the client and make that client satisfied and want to do business with us in the future. That's your job as the architect. So if you remember you're part of a sales team, like a solutions architect usually would be, know your bonus and promotions are going to be related to the what architectures you design, the value of those architectures and what you do for the company. If you're a cloud architect working at an end client, the, your value is the, the benefit that the company received from your architecture. So that's your job. So make sure you're delivering value for your client delivering what you need to do, work up to your fullest potential. So develop skills like uh, how to lead better lead an architecture's team, how to manage a large number of stakeholders, how to present to the C-suite and possibly the board of directors to exercise influence to get them to buy your billion dollar architecture. Develop your knowledge and be better and, and, and presentation skills and present at conferences. Start developing thought leadership documents and reference architecture documents to change the injury the industry. Speak with the press because that's what you're going to be doing as an architect. So develop those skills. Those are the skills that get you to the top. Those are the skills that get you to the executive architect roles, the principal architect roles, and the distinguished architect skills. So focus on that. And while we probably had fun in our engineering career, it is our past. And we can love that past. We can benefit from that past and we can leverage that past. But if we train for the skills of our old job, 
They're not going to be promoting us and do a better job. They're going to be moving us back to the old job that we had because that's where our skills would be. And if that's our goal, that's great. If your job is to move into a CIO, CTO, distinguished architect, principal architect, now you know where you should spend your career development and your training focus. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, enterprise architect, solutions architect, security architect, AI architect, please join me on a free architecture webinar. We host one every single week. It's live on Zoom. We'll have a full conversation. It'll be fun. We'll go over the role. We'll talk about the skills you need and uh, how you could learn them. And then after that, we'll answer any career questions you have about cloud architect careers, enterprise architect careers, solutions architect careers, what have you. And uh, while you're in the description of this video, registering for that free webinar, if you desire, please note there's many free resources for you. Uh, resources on how to win the architect interview, resources on how to increase your architect salary, resources on how to become a cloud architect, all kinds of things, and they're all free in the description of this video. So check it out and maybe sign up for one. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in the future.